the maximum amount allowed on nine of the country's toll roads. In the Doyle, Thonish de Lier confirmed ministers are looking at ways to defer or mitigate the increases. However, he couldn't give a cast iron commitment just yet. Sinn Féin's finance spokesperson Piers Doherty has called for the government to intervene and prevent the rise in costs. And it's only now because of the public outrage and the fact that we are so far and so deep into a cost of living crisis that the government is scrambling around like headless chickens, not knowing what to do. But people need to know because there's only a number of weeks left and sitting here. What is actually going to happen between now and the end of the year? Is the government going to intervene? Can you give any assurances that these tolls will not go ahead? Just 16% of Irish people pay for online news content, according to a leading academic. It comes as an Oireachtas committee has been hearing about the future funding for media outlets. The Independent Broadcasters of Ireland has called on the government to scrap the broadcasting levy to ease the burden on the radio sector. While Dr Dawn Wheatley from DCU warned TDs and senators about the potential dangers of new subscription platforms. Ultimately, we should be mindful of further fueling a two-tier news landscape in which those who are willing or able to pay will see one version of events with increased depth, analysis and verification, whereas the majority receive a tier of information which may lack that same substance, accuracy and rigour. And there's been an increase in the number of people coming to Ireland for international protection. Figures from the ESRI show there were just under 6,500 asylum applications in the first half of this year, compared to 2,200 during the same period in 2019. That's your news. More in an hour. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. Beat the shopping queues with Ryanair gift cards this Christmas. Sunny spells and scattered showers tomorrow, highest temperatures of 9 to 13 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Your chance to win big. News Talk's cash machine. Five consecutive rollovers means we have a huge prize tonight. This is the biggest cash prize ever given away on Irish Radio. And tomorrow we'll have a guaranteed winner. Someone is going to take home all the money. If you've entered since five o'clock last Thursday, you're still in with a chance to win. But you need to know this number. €111,111.11. Text play to 57557. That's 57557. Get your entry in by three o'clock tomorrow. Then across the Go Loud network stations, Barry Dunn will make that call. If your phone rings, answer within five rings. Tell him the exact amount in euro and cent and you'll win all that cash. Remember the amount. €111,111.11. Over 18s only. Text costs 250 plus your standard message rate. And you can get the terms and conditions on Newstalk.com. The Football Show on Off The Ball. With Sky. Watch Premier League, Women's Super League, EFL, Scottish Premiership and much more. Live on Sky Sports. I'm prepared to end it if I can. Well, do it then. Again. Do it then. What about your start to the game? I was, it wasn't bad, was it? <gasps> Why should there be an honest answer be a mistake? How can a modern day manager not have a mobile phone? Why should he? Oh. You're welcome along to Thursday's football show. Nathan with you this evening. So we have now seen all 32 teams in action at the World Cup. And Brazil certainly among the more impressive sides. They've just beaten Serbia by two goals to nil. Two second half goals from Richarlison. The first of them after Vinicius Jr. shot was saved and he tapped in from close range. Second of them, uh, well it may well be the goal of the tournament so far cross in from Vinicius from the left hand side controlled and then flicked up into the air and a scissors kick into the top corner of the net brilliant from Richarlison to give Brazil a 2-0 win the one concern for them is that Neymar seemed to hobble down the tunnel afterwards uh, with a bit of an ankle problem so we keep an eye on that over the next 24 hours earlier Portugal beat Ghana by three goals to two. Cristiano Ronaldo scored in his fifth World Cup finals. Opened the scoring from the penalty spot. All the goals came in the last 25 minutes. Portugal very fortunate to come away with victory. 3-2 against Ghana. It finished scoreless between Uruguay and South Korea. And earlier, Switzerland beat Cameroon by a goal to nil. Brina Mbolo, who was born in Cameroon, scored the only goal for Switzerland. We'll talk to Joey and Doe about that a little bit later in the football show. But let's go to our man in Qatar, Kevin Kilban. Good evening. Good evening, Nathan. How's it going? How's it going, Kevin? Yeah, it's all quiet. All quiet. Is it? Calm. Is it? Is it too quiet? After the storm, I think. Calm after the storm yesterday. We had a great day yesterday. I really enjoyed, um, you know, being at the Canada game with the, you know, the tempo that we set, the energy that was in the stadium. It was, it was a really good game to be at. Actually, I really enjoyed it. And today I've had a day off actually, so I've, I've watched three of the four games, and I just watched Brazil 
Just saw Robbie Keane on Being Sports early alongside Keys and Gray and David Veer, Pirlo, John Terry. Oof. You know, all the legends. All the yeah. hard hitters. Bloody hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, that, a, that was pretty much my day. A today. day off in Qatar. What's a day off in Qatar like? What do you do? Um, well, I, I don't know if you got word what I actually was doing today, Nathan. So the, this is probably a leading question from you, to be honest with you. No, no I'm just wondering because uh, I, 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 I know previous tournaments I've been at Wickhill, man, what a day off means. I'm just wondering in Qatar what a day off is like. <laughs> Well, we're in a dry country, as you well know. I was I was camel riding today. I've been camel riding, yeah. What? <laughs> so he said that again? Yeah. 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 Well, you heard what he said. Why do you need me to repeat it? You were camel riding. Uh, was, yeah, that, was that was that something you chose riding. to do, I, I, or is this for a, a piece of camera? No, I didn't choose. I didn't. I didn't choose to do it. I didn't choose to do it. I got asked to go with um, a few of the bosses here from Bell Media today, so I had to go and uh, en- entertain. I suppose you would say. So we ended up camel riding. We were dune bashing, as they call it, on like four by fours out in the Qatari desert, which took us down to the Saudi coast, just alongside um, uh, what's the sea there? Which I should know it. So we were down. We were down on the on the coast, just by the the, the Saudi border, actually. So yeah, we went there. And uh, anyway, I'd I'd rather I had tickets for Brazil as well. I'd, I'd maybe rather have gone to watch Brazil tonight, actually. So you're entertaining the bosses while camel riding. Like, is there two of you on the camel? Do you go with the big boss on no, the camel? No, there was there was there was fifteen. There was fifteen doing it. Yeah, fifteen separate cam- camels. Is, is yeah. camel riding uncomfortable? Yeah. It, it sounds like it's uncomfortable. Yeah, oh, I tell you what, it hurt my balls. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't <laughs> I say that, Ken. Honest to God. Are you not allowed to say that? Okay, well, it, 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 it hurts. Let's, it hurts, I have to say that, yeah. Wow. Well, I thought that was a yeah. more interesting story than I thought we'd get from your day off. <laughs> When's your next day yeah. off? Uh, the, the day of the next Brazil game. Yeah, I've got another day off, so I'm, I'm going to go and watch Brazil definitely that day, 100%. Uh, so you mentioned Canada last night. We get on to the actual game and their performance and all of that. Uh, like the question I get asked more often than any other uh, when I'm out and about is, "What's good bad at these days?" Uh, so you're working for Canadian TV and have been working for Canadian national TV for quite a while. And I'm just watching the BBC coverage and pitch side are Gary Lineker and Mika Richards and Gilberto Silva. And you're in that role in Canadian TV last night. You're on for what three hours pre-game live on Canadian yeah, TV? Yeah, we did. We had. We- we had a three-hour pre-game, yeah, unheard of stuff, yeah. We had a three-hour pre-game going into the game, obviously, and then we had uh, probably about an hour and a half post-game as well. It was a long day yesterday, a long day on air we were, yeah. But it was great. Honest to God, it was just a great atmosphere. And to see the team reach the level that they played at, I think it gives them a lot of belief, I think. But it was just great to be at, yeah. And what's your role on the panel? Because you're obviously the outsider, so you're coming into this quite recently. Yeah. I, like, let's be honest, I'm sure you didn't know a huge amount about Canadian football before you went over there. No. So are you expected no, to be the, the more critical voice? Uh, probably a bit of that. Probably, I think it's, I think, I mean, we, we, on, on the panel with us, we have uh, Janine Becky, who won Olympic gold with, uh, with Canada at the last Olympics. Uh, she'll be part of the Canadian side that's playing Ireland over in Australia next year. Julian de Guzman, who who was actually Canada's record cap holder, he played at Deportivo La Coruña, yeah, La Coruña and played in Germany. So it, it's us three on the panel, essentially. So they're both obviously Canadian legends, and I'm the guy that's supposed to come on just to try and temper down expectations, I suppose, a little bit. Yeah, try to maybe play Belgium up a little bit, I suppose. It wasn't really that way yesterday, because I actually fancied Canada to, to get something from the game. I thought... Out of Belgium and Croatia, I thought they could have taken something out of uh, out of Belgium, actually, but it just wasn't to be in the end. I was thinking of you watching some of the Canadian players and quite a few of the players because we, you know, we have heard a lot that maybe the World Cup's not the pinnacle anymore and that the Champions League is now the real elite of the game. But you look at the Canadian players, or you look at the South Korean players today, and you see what it means to them to represent their country yeah. still that for actually those Canadian players, this is the pinnacle of the game, that regardless of what Alfonso Davies achieves with Bayern Munich, for him, representing his country at a World Cup is probably better than anything he'll ever do. Yeah, that, that, yeah it absolutely is. There's, 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 there's actually amazing stories behind him. You know, I, I mean, Alfonso Davies is, is an amazing story in itself. He was, uh, you know, his parents are from Li- Liberia. I think he was born in Ghana. He came to Canada as a... Um, uh, he was actually... He left Liberia during the... Um, during the war years ago. So he came as a refugee to Canada when he was five years of age. When he arrived in Canada, 
um, 10 years later, he's actually playing in, in uh, Vancouver Whitecaps first team when he was 15, transferred to, to Bayern at 17, 18 years of age. And his story's amazing. You know, Jonathan David as well, he, he's, from, he's from Haiti, another one who's, you know, he came from such poor uh, upbringing, ended up going to the United States, born in Haiti, transferring then on to, to, to Canada. He's had a great move, doing great stuff at Lille as well. The story behind so many of the players is, is it's amazing, actually. And to see the level, as you say, and what it means to them, because they, they, they all speak of a brotherhood. John Herdman it comes out with a lot of one-liners and there's a lot of, um, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to disrespect what they're saying, but he, he's built a culture in there that wouldn't necessarily be something that I would necessarily buy into. But he's got all those players buying into what he's, what he's trying to give the team. They talk about a brotherhood. They talk about a real togetherness. And, and it shows, I think you all saw that last night, the way that they played through CONCACAF. They were the CONCACAF region. They obviously never qualified. They never even qualified for the last round of qualification. I think it was since 93. So it shows how far they've come in the last two years. They, you know, during COVID as well, they weren't even allowed to leave the country. So a lot of the, oh, sorry, they weren't allowed to play games in, in Canada. So they, a lot of the games were played out of Canada. So it, it, the story's amazing around how they actually qualified through, through, through COVID to get to the stage that they got to. And then, of course, maybe there's been a lot of negativity around the team in the lead up to it. There's been a lot of talk around the bonus system that the players haven't agreed to going into the World Cup. And, you know, Canada are the only team at the World Cup that haven't got a jersey because essentially Nike backed against them or uh, the Federation backed against them actually qualifying for the World Cup. So they didn't put the process in place to make new jerseys if they qualify for the World Cup. So there's a, there's a lot that's been backed against them. And I think they feel that. It's almost as if we're against the world. We've got to fight the world and we're going to take everybody on. And I, and I think that's where they've got this spirit from. And I think, as I said, you, you saw it last night against Belgium where, I mean, they should have, I mean, I thought they should have had at least two penalties in the game, uh, maybe even two aside of the one that they got last night. So I thought they were really unlucky last night. But I think they're the sort of characters within that group of players that they're going to park it. it it's done now. Look, it didn't go the way we planned but we can take it forward now to Croatia. And looking at Croatia in, in their game against Morocco, I don't think there's anything to fear. So on the game last night, like statistically you could say Canada were the most unlucky of all the teams in the first run of games to come away with nothing. 22 shots compared to nine, though both Belgium and Canada had three on target. That little yeah. lack of quality in front of goal, is that something you would have expected from watching a lot of them over the last couple of years? Yeah, it, it, it was telling, wasn't it? You could see that. Um, I wouldn't want to name drop here, but Nathan Murphy texted me after the game to tell me that Canada's set pieces were brutal. Um, and, I, I, um, I, 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 I would have thought a team like Canada coming in, and particularly, uh, you have his correct pronunciation, Ustakio. Am I right? Oh, Stachio. 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 Yes, yeah. Stefan, Stefan Astakio. He's top player, uh, Nathan, really top player, really, really good. Uh, I know I've been banging the drum when I spoke to you guys around him, but of course he's at Porto, he's playing Champions League football, he's scored Champions League goals this season, but uh, Stefan Astakio is top class, yeah, he's a really good player. Uh, Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, two of the bigger names. Like, was Would you have expected more from Davies last night? Yeah, definitely. And do you know what? The, the, the penalties kind of annoyed a lot of Canadians, uh, he doesn't take penalties at his club. Jonathan David takes penalties at Lille. I think everybody expected Jonathan David to take the penalty. And Alfonso Davies grabbed the ball. It was almost, I think there's a bit of a thought of that he wanted to grab the glory to score the first Canadian goal at a World Cup. Um, and it was it was a poor penalty. You can't really, I mean, yes, you always credit a goalkeeper when, when a penalty is missed and the goalkeeper saves it. But it was a really weak penalty. And as I said, Jonathan David is the guy that, that usually takes penalties. I, I mean, I think there's been a bit of, Debate around it today. Cal Larin is another. He's he's Canada's top goal scorer. He he actually usually does take penalties, but he wasn't on the pitch. And John Herdman after the game said, "Look, it was decided on the pitch." Now everybody talks about John Herdman being a coach of you know you know attention to detail. He doesn't let anything uh, you know any stone unturned. You know the usual quotes that you hear. And he said that was left to an on-field decision. I couldn't believe it. Surely, you know, these are the, the details you talk about before the game. You have a designated penalty taker. You have your guy to take it, and that's it. And that wasn't the case last night. And I, I think Jonathan David actually suffered from that himself. I know Davies missed the penalty, but I think he probably felt, I should be taking this. He didn't take the penalty um, for whatever reason. And I think he was affected throughout the game because I, I thought David was actually quite poor himself on, on the night as well. 
uh, Davies obviously playing, Alfonso Davies playing at, at the highest level of any player in the squad. Would that yeah. suggest actually that, that maybe the harmony that they're trying to create, the brotherhood, it, it's not all it's made out to be? No, I don't think that. I, I no, I, I, I don't think there's any um, breaks in the camp or anything like that. I don't think that's the case. Uh, I, I think it's probably safe to say. I mean, uh, people might disagree with it, but I think if you're picking your best eleven right now, Alfonso Davies would be in that best eleven. He'd, he'd probably play as, as your left back in that side. He, he is that good. He is world class, um, and I think he takes a lot of attention away from a lot of the other players. But I think. Much the same as you know, we probably had it with Roy in our team. And I'm, I think a lot of teams have had it with one superstar that's in the side. You, he gets away with a little bit more within within that group. I'd, I'd probably say that. And he missed games in qualification uh, with Canada. And they kind of rallied round and got themselves over the line in the end. So, yes, the uh, he is the superstar, as I was saying. But he, he gives them that magic when they need it. Although he didn't necessarily give it them last night. He played left wing back last night. And he actually hasn't played left back or left wing back for Canada in in a good while, he's, I think it's once in three years that he's actually played in that position. He, he usually plays as a 10 or up front as a, in a, in a three-man attack. So it was quite surprising, really, with the way that Herbin set them up last night. But I think he wanted to get as many of his key players in the side. I'm, I'm sure that he must have been impressed with Tejan Buchanan, who's at Club Bruges. He's, he's, you know, he, he's got something about him. He's, he's a player that can create. He's a player that's got a lot of ability. Uh, and I think he wanted to get Buchanan and he wanted to get uh, David and he wanted to get Junior Hoylett into, into the side. I think he just I think he just felt that by playing David at left wing back, it was it was a case of getting all those attacking players into the side at once uh, last night. Roberto Martinez, after the game, was just delighted to get the three points, saying they'd only been together for five days and that you look at the Argentina and Germany results and maybe that's a factor that the teams and squads have had very little time to prepare for this tournament. And it's just about getting through the knockout stage, building momentum and performances will come. Would you look at that Belgian performance and think, yeah, he's probably right that this was a starting point, they got the victory and there's enough there? Or would you look at the form of some of the players? Like, it, it's a real split on Eden Hazard's performance last night. I saw some people saying at halftime yeah. he was actually excellent. Like, it felt to me like he, he really struggled to impose himself yeah. in the game. He, did, he had moments, didn't he? He had real moments where you could see his quality and you, there was a few wow moments actually in the game from Hazard. But no, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't enough in my opinion either. I, I, didn't felt across, I didn't feel across the 90. He was good. Probably the worst game. Live watching Kevin De Bruyne, it's the worst game I've ever seen Kevin De Bruyne have. Um, defensively, I thought they actually looked quite good defensively as it turned out. You mentioned there with the lack of quality that Canada had really in the final third. I think... You were, you were looking at Canada to really exploit the lack of pace defense, defensively. And I don't think they were able to do that enough because a lot of the crosses that came in, they were dealt with quite well by the Tongan and, and, and Alderweireld. So I thought they defended quite well. But Tielemans was, was dreadful, wasn't he? And uh, Yannick Carrasco was dreadful. They, he was getting torched down the right-hand side by Richard Larea and, uh, and Tejan Buchanan in the first half. That's why he was dragged at half-time. So Does that I show why Tielemans think... is... is is at Leicester and maybe hasn't got that move to a top four club yet because it does feel he has performances like that for Leicester quite a bit as well yes he'll, he'll have yeah. games where he's exceptional I, and I score brilliant goals but does he have the real consistency of a of a top class midfielder no I, I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying there I think that he has his moments at, at times where you'll see some of the goals that he scores and some of the passes that he makes but I think he has those type of games that I saw last night far too often and I think that would probably put maybe a top four side uh, actually going on and taking him. If you look at, and, and I said it to, I was actually on to Adrian last week, um, uh, what's it, oh, glad at Ecuador. Um, uh, Casado. Uh, Casado. Like, if you're looking at Tielemans and, and Casado, who are you going to sign right now? Who are you going to sign? Casado is head and shoulders above him for everything that he gives you on the pitch. So, um, no, I, I think that would, that's what would rule you out. Absolutely would. I think De Bruyne is going to be better. I think that goes without saying. Is the that six the days base? that Martinez spoke Sorry, is that the bit with Martinez when he's talking about them getting better? Because there were, particularly in the second half when De Bruyne came into it a bit more, there were three or four times where he had one of those sort of Manchester City-esque runs where he's driving through the middle. And you know at City, almost exactly what's going to happen. Five different runs happen in front of him and he always picks the right pass. Yeah. Where actually he's almost looking up and there's nobody making a run and he's playing a simple ball to Hazard that sort of comes to nothing. Is that the bit of having more time in the training ground? Martinez is trusting that that law click into gear? Does Lukaku I'm, I'm bring sure. all that into gear? Well, like, he's not going to be available for the next game, Lukaku. It, it, it looks like it'll probably only group uh, knockout stages if they get through. So um, it, he might play 20 minutes, maybe half an hour in the third game if, if, if needed. But I don't know. I, I was was watching them last night, watching uh, I, uh, watching De Bruyne. And 
I think the Bruyne just will get better naturally. I don't necessarily think it's stuff on the training ground. I mean, how many times do you see international teams and when the teams are coming to Dublin and they, they, they all only have four or five days to prepare for international, you've got to get it right quickly. And, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll come to Dublin or whatever it will be. And, and Stephen Kenny's Irish side, they'll win a game and we'll be going, right, that was a great win. And then sometimes we'll go, well, they've only had five days to prepare and they've not necessarily got it right. So a manager can use any excuse he wants, I feel, from from that. I, I do feel they'll get better. I, I think that the time that they've had and the amount of games that they've played as well, the Premier League matches and Champions League matches, I, I think that goes against them coming into this tournament. But I think now after that first game, I think it gives them a, t- a chance to feel everything out. Uh, Argentina, Nick, I, I know they have Messi, but... Honestly, I said, I said it. I don't fancy Argentina. I know they're a top five team in the world. I want Argentina to win. If you're asking me who I want to win, I'd, I'd pick Argentina. But how many of those players in Argentina's side would get into Brazil's side? Would get into maybe England's, France team, um, one of the other Spain's team even? There'd be very few of those players. So I don't fancy Argentina as one of these big shot teams to go on and win it. And it wasn't just because of the Saudi Arabia result. I just didn't fancy them before, beforehand. I think they'll probably still get out. I think they probably will pick up six points, but I just don't fancy Argentina really to go deep and get to a semi or a final in this competition. What about Brazil then tonight? That 2-0 win against Serbia at the brilliance of Richarlison's second goal. Like Such talent in an attacking sense. And then you look at Jesus Martinelli just coming off the bench for the last 20 minutes. Uh, It really couldn't have been a more impressive start in a lot of ways. Mm. I, I, I like you. I heard you earlier on there, Finacci talking. I, I fancy Serbia. I think Serbia. I think we've seen enough of them in Dublin, haven't they? You, you, what five years ago, probably at this stage, you and I were out in uh, in Serbia to, to do an island game as well. And there was no camel riding. Something. I can tell you. No, no, there wasn't. There wasn't there was a lot of rain. There was a lot of rain that night. That's what I do remember. Um, but no, I think Serbia have built and they've they've done it right over the last few years. And I fan- I actually fancy Serbia. I think Serbia. I think they've still got a chance of getting out. Watching Cameroon and um, and uh, Switzerland today, I think they'll probably beat those sides. I think they're good enough to beat those sides. Switzerland will be the tricky one, of course it will, but I, I fancy them to win those games. And I, I think they've still got a chance. But to do what they did against Serbia, they just kept on cracking on. And Serbia had a couple of breakaways, didn't quite pick the right pass, but the momentum was building, wasn't it? And um, it, it, it was great to watch Brazil. I, I, I mean, I, you watch them, and it, it always seems like it's, it's the World Cup has began when or begun when when Brazil turn up. And seeing that second goal, that Richarlison, it was you know um, I heard you analysing it before. It wasn't quite a top corner, but it was you know middle of the middle of the goal, I suppose. Um, but you, you did well in analysing. I'll give you that. And I think that um, I think that goal probably summed up Brazil. I think the the, the confidence that's within that, in that team. Even the subs that, that came onto the pitch, the, the three or four subs that they made, it was about freshening things up. There's going to be a lot of changes, I feel, with Brazil in this group stage. And there probably will be a few surprises when it comes to the knockout stages with, with team selection. But no, I think they're all informed. They're all confident. I think they feel they're going to go far, don't they, as a team? And I, I, I probably feel they've got a great chance of winning it, yeah. Uh, Kev, you're going to be back on tomorrow morning on OTB AM. You're going to be looking ahead to England, USA tomorrow night and Wales, Iran. A highlight of the tournament for me so far, John Hartson's co-commentary on the Wales game. You don't need unbiased what commentary it? when it comes what to the World Cup. It was what glorious. Was what, what well, was well Gar- Garth Bale is without question not just the greatest footballer of all time, maybe the greatest man of all time. And when Acosta, <laughs> now in fairness, I was with him on this, when Acosta made that challenge to deny him the goal from the halfway line with the last kick of the game, uh, I think the firing yeah. squad has been called for a for uh, Acosta from John Arton uh, and what's best about it is obviously this is going out across all of England who are so used to having the totally biased coverage from everybody towards England they're all outraged that John Hartson is calling for Wales to actually win this game so I hope Wales do something and it goes down to England and Wales uh, in the last game yeah, that'd be good. I think you've got to fancy him, haven't they, against Iran? They Iran looked poor, didn't they? But um, I think, yeah, I think they'll win that. I think they'll win that. USA, I said the other day, I don't fancy the USA. I think England will win that as well, comfortably enough yet. All right, Kev. i got to say, I'd say it was this time three years ago, we were on the way to Anfield, and Kev said, I'm going and dancing on ice. And of all the things I thought might happen over the next three years, you riding camels in Qatar for Canadian TV, I just didn't really think that's what was going to happen. Nathan, I, Nathan, I was riding on camels. Let's just put that. Let's just make that quite clear. On that note, Kev, we'll talk to you on to BM in the morning. Yeah. All right, take it easy. All the best. All right, great stuff, Kevin Coban. There, live from Qatar. All our football coverage is brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport, and Premier Sports. And a great Joey and Doe up next.
Football on Off the Ball. With Sky, proud partner and supporter of the Republic of Ireland women's national football team. This is News Talk. News Talk Breakfast. Because the local authority can only work within the funds that it is given. I think the line from the Department of Housing is that the, the money was there. No, Shane, I, I, I'd never... Uh, but, but I say, I don't somebody 